Hello everyone and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a top level game of Terran vs Protoss where we find ourselves on Stargazers. Now spotting right here in the top right hand corner of the map, playing with the red Protoss probes from Germany, we have none other than Showtime. And his opponent in the top left with the blue SCVs hailing from France, we are looking at Clem's main command center. Alrighty, so this particular game was recently played during Home Story Cup 21. And truth be told, I had already moved my Home Story Cup 21 replays folder into like an archive folder instead. The main reason for that is that I thought I had already casted all of the best games from this particular tournament already. Yesterday, however, someone who will not be named who also uploads StarCraft 2 content to YouTube... Okay, Mr. Winter uploaded a video calling this particular game between these two players the game of the year? So I thought for just a moment, and I realized I had already casted this game when I was there at the actual tournament. I was there to cast Home Story Cup 21. If I recall correctly, this was our very first series of the third day of the tournament, and everyone's a little bit hungover, the caffeine hasn't quite kicked in yet, you know what I mean? And if I recall correctly as well, we were doing like a four-man cast, so it was me, Rotterdam, Wardy, and the Muslim. So when you're casting by yourself, obviously you don't really have anyone to talk over, you don't really need to listen to anyone else other than, well, maybe like the the game's units, right? When you're when you're commentating a game on StarCraft 2 with four people. First off, that's way too much. But secondly, you also spend about half your time trying to come up with something clever to say, and you know, you're not trying to talk over anyone else, and it's kind of difficult to take turns. So usually you kind of just, you know, talk a little bit one after another, but you're also very conscious of the fact you don't want to talk for like two minutes straight just to annoy the other casters. Anyhow, I indeed already checked out this game. I even know when I'm winning it because I've already casted it. However, I am with Winther. This is an absolutely amazing game of StarCraft 2. And if I recall correctly, it comes down to the absolute final units. So I can imagine a lot of you haven't seen this game yet. You should be in for an absolute treat. I've actually asked this before in one of those YouTube community polls and I asked basically like if anyone minded it if I already knew the outcome for a game of StarCraft 2 if I've already casted a game or I've already seen a game do you mind it if I still upload it to a YouTube channel anyways and it turns out I think like 99.5% of people said no loco I really don't care I'm just here to watch good StarCraft so it turns out the only person that that really bothers is me right so I'm the only one that really seems to care uh, so usually I try to not upload games that I already know the outcome of, but this is indeed an absolute banger, so... We're gonna check it out once again, but this time around we're gonna check it out together, okay? Anyhow, I'm excited to bring you this game. So, both Showtime and Kalem, I mean, if you've watched StarCraft 2 for a little while, you're well familiar with these two players. They play a very macro-focused style, so Clem definitely not afraid to be an aggressive Terran player, of course. He likes being aggressive. All Terran players like being aggressive. Showtime, however, definitely the epitome of a macro Protoss, right? So his nickname, I've said this every single Showtime cast that I've ever done, I believe, but his nickname in the German community is Die Mawa, for a very good reason. It translates to the wall, and well, playing against him apparently feels like playing against the wall, because the man just simply will not die. Honestly, one of the biggest compliments you can have, but it's also a huge indicator of exactly what kind of playstyle he likes to go for. Mr. Showtime likes to play that macro focus style. He will go for additional expansions, more so than going in for the kill. He will basically, when he's ahead, he will try to get more ahead, right? And that is one of the age old adages of, well, the StarCraft world. Really is trying to keep this Oracle alive as well. Does not want to fly anywhere into that natural expansion. Mm. Main base is wide open, but he doesn't really know if there's another Cyclone just about to pop out or if there's already a cheeky Widow Mine somewhere hidden in that mineral line. I mean, would be a little bit early for that, but that is a very Showtime-esque move, you know? Keeping this Oracle alive, keeping it around for later utility. He doesn't really need to win by dealing economical damage. He can win just by being better than the opponent. Now, speaking of which, Clem is a, yeah, a very scary player, right? Not someone who will very easily... Ooh, careful now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, he's not someone who will easily roll over and die, is what I was gonna say. And he's also someone... This is only something that the top-level Terrans do, that in the earlier stage of the game will already split up their units, right? So, he's going for a little bit of an attack, it seems, as soon as Stimpak is finishing up. That's still about, well, 10, 20, 30 seconds or so away from finishing. 
That said, the Oracle is down at this point. It has given Showtime the heads up that this attack is coming, so he's added on a couple of shield batteries. He's also gone for the third Nexus already. He's not gonna cancel that one, of course, but Blink is not done yet. Stimpak is finishing up right here, right now. That being said, though, Showtime hiding on top of that ramp. Okay, Siege Tank is gonna try and Siege up in an extremely ambitious position. Great Reaper grenade as well, actually. All right, making it difficult for those Stalkers to be in the right place at the right time. But eventually, since the Siege Tank ended up going down, Clem is going to be pushed back. Now Blink is finishing up as well in a moment. Okay, another Stim will be utilized. Keep in mind, there's no Medivax or anything along those lines available for those bio units. So, yeah, it's a one-way trip, I'm afraid, Jimmy. Yeah, never mind. That Reaper is so sick, actually. The Reaper grenades here have been really sick. No, not the... Oh, man. Not the Reaper. Not even a bunker. He doesn't need a bunker. All he needs is more units. All right. So, a successful start right here for Showtime regardless, I would say. Despite the fact that he ended up losing that Oracle. Obviously, he'd rather not lose it. But he's got the third Nexus up and running. He skipped a lot of his early game production in order to actually get that economy going. And, yeah, despite the fact that he lost that Oracle, he's going to now be able to continue harassing his Terran opponent as well. Blink is obviously on cooldown here for a moment, but he's going to be able to get those units out of that base relatively easily. I think Oracles, or sorry, Oracles, Widow Mines in this position are, yeah, really sweet. It's become very, very common for Protosses on this map to try and blink behind those little mineral fields, and obviously, well, you can blink behind, but you'll still get shot. This is something that Showtime has probably considered at this point, despite the fact that he hasn't seen the Widow Mines. There's a good chance that he's not going to try and blink into that section of the map once again, just because he knows exactly, well, what these Terran players have been up to lately, right? With their dirty little tricks. Anyhow, it's going to be plus one ground weapons here for Protoss together with Charge. He's focusing on that ground-based army for the time being. Mostly just a whole lot of gateway units, whereas Clem is going for the classical Marine Marauder Medivac. You'll be able to utilize this to go for the third command center easily, of course. Fourth next is already coming up in the bottom right hand corner. So again, very common move from Showtime in particular. A little bit of a widow mine drop over here. Anyways, very common move here from Showtime in particular, right? I mean, this is what all the top level Protoss players do for very good reason, but it makes a lot of sense, even though you may be in a pretty good position. When you think about it, when you go for an attack, you're taking a chance. Whereas if you expend behind it, assuming you continue playing really, really well, you're gonna be in a very good position moving forward as well. It's very common actually for newer StarCraft players to get a little bit carried away with their attacking. They're like, I am ahead right now! I want to win the game right here, right now too! And I think everyone yeah, learns that at some time or another when you're a StarCraft player, that oftentimes when you're ahead, it's better to expend rather than to attack. Anyhow, Showtime takes this to an extreme, so second Robo coming up right now for him as well. He's gone into the Robo Bay. This will open up the opportunity for him to go for some of those higher tech Protoss units. Most notably, of course, the Colossi as well as the Disruptor. You have a bunch of speed upgrades as well for, for example, Observers and Prisms and all that in the Robo Bay. But overall, yep, Colossus makes a lot of sense, although he did hit. Uh, okay, the shortest little supply book. The shortest little supply book. Already though, Clem transitioning towards higher tech units of his own as well. Everyone's beloved MOBA unit. Every Terran's beloved uh, MOBA unit anyways. He's gonna go into the Ghost Academy. Ghost Academy, of course, very good, especially against Protoss too. We've seen it a lot against Zerg lately, but against Protoss, the EMP ability gets rid of the shields on those Protoss units too, which is pretty sweet. All right, so Clem making a bit of a minefield over here. Even if Zealots were to try to come from the high ground or the back, look at that. There's like a nice ring of mi or of well, missile turrets, of widow mines set up already. Battery overcharge though, utilized over here. Yeah, Clem can retreat relatively easily here. That's why those colossi are so critical, right? There should be one of them out. Yeah, maybe even two of them out already. But apparently, Clem. Yeah, he's gonna have to be pushed back right here, right now. Showtime not waiting for those units to join the fray. They will not have extended thermal lens yet anyways. Looks like he will be okay for the time being. Good control right there by the German. Super important that you have those observers in the right place at the right time too. Okay, he spots that all of those medevacs are loaded up with units right now. Uh, okay. 
I think that Clem probably noticed that the stalkers were already heading in that direction and he probably realized that he was spotted. He probably did not see that observer, but just judging by the movement right there from the Protoss player, the aggressive blink, he knows that there's a, a very good chance he would be caught in the main base if he decides to get aggressive. Instead, right now, reinforcements are moving across. Fourth Command Center has just started up as well. We're going into plus two, plus one here as well for Terran, so he's continuously trying to get more and more of those upgrades. Protoss is still going to be in a defensive position. There's another Colossus coming out, though. Careful, do not miss Rally that. We've seen that so many times where one of those Colossi just wanders out of the natural into that Terran army. Ton of bio units over here, though, but a lot of Widow Mines as well. I think that these Widow Mines now, yeah, with those maximum range Colossi, are going to be sniped relatively easily. And Hans Shockwave's coming up for uh, Mr. Clem. That's going to give him some more range on that EMP, a higher radius with that more range. Um, but he's also making the transition towards... Well, air weapon attacks. So that's going to be very helpful, especially on Vikings and eventually Liberators as well. That's usually the next step after countering those Colossi. Showtime knows that there's a good chance that he will be forcing out Vikings right now from his opponent. I mean, four Colossi is a commitment from Protoss. So Terran has to respect it and they have to respond to it. So he knows very well that Disruptors are likely going to be the better choice together with, for example, Dark Templar. And that's exactly the transition that he's making. Another Nexus coming up. Medivac drop going towards the pocket base. That one's still not acquired by Protoss. It's actually quite difficult to usually acquire this one. Because, well, even though it's right there, and you can easily take it. It's difficult to hold on to, right? Just because of those very aggressive Terran drops. Big push, though, in the main base right now. Yeah, battery overcharge is obviously very nice. It's going to buy a bunch of time for potential reinforcements to head on over in that direction, too. In the meantime, there's a large Terran army moving towards the bottom right hand corner as well, ready to take care of one of those Nexi. Disruptor not utilized just yet. Battery Overcharge is going to run out. Protoss in the meantime. Oh, nice splits right there by the uh, the French Terran. Protoss in the meantime, though, repositioning the bulk of their army towards the bottom right hand corner as well. Massive EMP does go down. Good control right there, though, once again by the German. And you can see that these guys... This is beautiful, by the way, here for Showtime. But this is yeah, a very clear sign that these two are incredibly evenly matched. I feel like a lot of people kind of count Showtime out a lot, right? Like, Clem has got a lot of, like, excitement behind this play. And I guess Showtime has been playing at the top level for the better part of a decade, right? Like, he's always been very good. And Clem, well, at least compared to Showtime, a relative newcomer to the StarCraft scene, although he's been doing this for many years as well. But I really feel like Showtime does not get as much hype behind him as he really deserves. This guy is ridiculously good. Like, practically everyone out there would have already fallen under the pressure of Clem. Now, also props to Clem right there for not missing uh, any of those hits from the Protoss. It's super easy to just wander forward with your Protoss or with your Terran army and accidentally take one of those Disruptors to the face. Okay, good control here. Once again, all of the Purification Novas have been dodged. That does mean they're going to be on cooldown for a little bit. Clemdo kiting backwards, trying to just get rid of all of those Zealots, trying to take the most efficient trades that he can. Once again, a big Medivac drop, heading towards that pocket base of the Protoss. This is not spotted. Showtime, though, does have an Observer over here. I didn't even see it, so there's no way Clem saw that one. This does give him the heads up that there is a Medivac army heading on a cross, and he really needs to know, because that is an awful lot of bio units. One of the Colossi, though, wandered up the little Reaper ledge over there. Okay. Ends up getting picked off, but a lot of the bio units do get down as well. All right. Relatively nice back and forth so far. More resources lost by the Protoss player, but Protoss has also got that economical advantage here for quite a while already. Showtime actually going up to 91 probes. Really trying to utilize this... Yeah, really trying to utilize all of those probes that he's got to mine as efficiently as he can. He's got a lot of mineral fields to control, but obviously those bases will run out. Showtime still trying to go bowling against that Terran army. All right, battery overcharge. Trying to keep those units alive. Dark Templar in the meantime, by the way. I almost missed it. Dark Templar tried killing a planetary fortress that was morphing in, but... Looks like Mr. Clem ended up cancelling the planetary and then lifted up the command center barely in the nick of time. Five SCVs ended up going down there, but at the cost of a bunch of Dark Templar, and I think those Archons also got picked off, so that's six Dark Templar going down in total. 
Terran's still hanging out over here. Showtime has full vision of this. So those observer positions are actually so big. I feel like this is not something we talk about very frequently. But when you play Protoss, you really realize how blind you are most of the time. Like, especially coming as a, as a Zerk player, right? I've oh, played a lot of StarCraft 2 over the years. It always... Uh, oh my god, this is a horrible fight right here over Protoss. Okay, he does have a couple of those units there in the end. Anyways, you're... You're usually forgetting the fact that, well, both Terran and Protoss are, generally speaking, rather blind. Although that being said, with Protoss, you're usually the defender, right? In these sort of circumstances, so you really have to try and see where those Terran units are going. Whereas with Terran, you have a little bit more time to respond if you're being the aggressor. Anyhow, once again, relatively even trade right there in the end. Crazy control on both sides, by the way. Six o'clock base, coming up here for showtime. He wants to mine those juicy golden minerals. Clem heading on over in that direction too. He sees the Nexus right now. He will stem right away and he's going to make short work of that. In the meantime, a couple of Dark Templar, they have Shadow Strike. They blinked across those mineral fields. And they're going to try and just be as annoying as possible. But the Nexus at the bottom section of the map, of course, was killed as well. So an eye for an eye here in the end. All right. I'm assuming Clem is going to be heading over towards the bottom left uh, corner next. And at that point... Especially now with Terran uh, also going up against the Protoss with the pocket base. At that point, essentially all of the expansions on either side of the map have been taken. And it has to be the golden base that's coming up next. Obviously the trades will still have to go on after that as well, but... Uh, getting that would be nice. Advanced Ballistics. Ooh, okay, does get the Knight. Yeah, so fighting over the Golden Minerals is something I expect to see a lot more often as well going forward on these maps. Especially since the top level guys are usually so evenly matched these days, and since they now have a lot of experience on these maps. Okay, this is really nice here for Showtime. Getting a couple of those Liberators for free. Uh, but yeah, fighting over the Golden Minerals is going to be pretty sick, I think, in some of those future games as well. Should be a lot of fun to watch. Carriers, though, are now hitting the battlefield as well for Showtime. Interestingly enough, he's going for an armor upgrade after plus one uh, flyer attacks, which I don't really agree with. I think it's much better to go for plus two attack, but anyways, maybe you queued them up just because there has been a lot of action all over the map. He needs to be very careful. Okay, now he starts up. Oh, what? Oh, he starts it up for a moment and then he cancels it again. Probably waiting, trying to optimize. Oh, no, he instead got a, a second cyber core. That's why. All right, so we have one cyber core for ground, or sorry, one cyber core for air armor, and then one for air attacks as well. Dark Templar, though, have been incredibly annoying here for Clem. He's doing a good job cleaning all of them out. But whereas Showtime has been mining the bottom right and corner here for a while, as a matter of fact, it's now running out. He's been denying his opponent's expansions here for a while already. And these guys, they're not cheap, but they deal a ton of damage. So if you don't pay attention for even a moment, yeah, you find yourself in a pretty good spot. Blinking all over the place, trying to force multiple scans. Every single scan could have been a mule. Okay, Disruptor's once again moving forward, but Clem stims in time, gets them out of there. Dealing with the Dark Templar while also trying to not lose your entire army to Disruptors is <laughs> easier said than done. Okay, more Vikings coming up. Mostly here because we have continuous carrier production too, but at the same time also a third robotics facility. So Showtime setting himself for a bi uh, okay, setting himself up for a big tech transition. He does get the snipe right there on one of those command centers, but he needs to be very careful. Terran army coming in from every angle. Okay, Vikings. Vikings actually now getting some good shots right there on the carriers, and he will force the recoil at the very least. Now, this was definitely an overextension here by the Protoss player. He needs to get on out of there. The problem is, right, not only do you lose a bunch of your units, the 6 o'clock base is once again gonna fall. At the very least, assuming that Clem is gonna head on over in that direction, I was gonna say he needs to. I think that this is priority numero uno. Since he hasn't been trading more efficiently so far, right? He has lost... He, yeah, he's lost less resources than his opponent. Assuming the 6 o'clock base never mines, and they both mine out their side of the map, he will find himself at an advantage. That being said, if it's up to Showtime, 
He's gonna try and slow that Terran army down as much as possible. Once again, forcing that entire army to retreat. He lost the Nexus down south, but he will gain a command center over here up north. Uh. From the shadows, I Showtime doesn't really know exactly where the Terran army is located at all times, right? That's one of the hardest things. Just knowing where your opponent is located is very easily set, but very difficult to do. The night is dark and full of Terrans. I guess the map is dark, huh? Anyhow, it's very true though when you play against guys like Clem or for example Bjorn. These lads are all over the map. A lot of the bio units are so incredibly low in HP though, but these traits are fantastic right here for the Frenchman. Assuming he doesn't take one of those big disruptor hits to the face and he doesn't actually get any of those marauders down to zero HP. I mean, health apparently is a resource. In the meantime, once again, Dark Templar being annoying, trying to force this Staron player off of his back. Metavex at this point low on energy too though, so you can't actually stand here and fight very well. I mean, EMPs definitely can help out quite a bit, but it's mostly just Stalkers and Disruptors here for our Protoss player for now. More DTs. <laughs> okay, more DTs heading on over towards the bottom left hand corner. Showtime literally just built a pylon inside of his opponent's base just to slow this expansion down more. If you look right now at the resource count, Clem is actually, well, he's close to maxed out, but he's not quite there, and he doesn't actually have a lot of money. Protoss is maxed out, and they still have about two and a half thousand resources in the bank. So denying that expansion, super important. StarCraft is, after all, a game of economies. A couple disruptors over here get targeted down. If you kill them while the Purification Nova is channeling, okay. It does cancel the ability. Pretty big hit over there. Oh my god. That disruptor came out of left field right there. <laughs> Don't know where that came from, but... Luckily it did not explode on the Protoss army instead, because that is always a risk. Six o'clock base, once again acquired by the Protoss player, or at the very least he's trying to. A lot of snipes are going down though, and we see just constant zealot drops. Every time I feel like uh, we see Showtime retreating, right? He ends up losing a bunch of his units as well. This Nexus right now is gonna be given up. Planetary finally acquired in the bottom left hand corner, and Clem has got himself some additional resources to mine. I don't know if Showtime agrees with that though. Showtime now making an aggressive move towards what seems to be the left side of the map at the very least and probably the bottom left hand corner or maybe one of those other outer bases. Instead he's going to be sending a Zealot Dark Templar force to try and get rid of that, uh, that CC in the bottom left. There is detection available but the planetary can only shoot so many angles at once. The problem is though there's still a huge Terran army now knocking on the front door of Showtime's base. This is where a lot of that tech is at, right? So he has a couple disruptors in the main base. They're trying to, I guess, just pretend to be really cool, trying to, yeah, roll into that Terran force as well, but so far that hasn't really happened yet. Excellent micro here by the French Terran. He's now trading natural for natural, though, and is that really an advantage that you want to have? I honestly think that will come out ahead right here for Clem. He's going to have to retreat here eventually, because pushing up that ramp towards the main base is going to be a bit of a dangerous move. That said, obviously, if this comes down to a full-on base race, Terran structures can fly, which is pretty significant, right? If you don't really have any air units, it becomes very hard. Now, the scan at the bottom section of the map reveals exactly where that Nexus is located and where that income from Showtime is coming from. Another command center ends up going down, that Terran bio army trying to chase all of this down too, but... I mean, it's coming from every angle of the map. Two Liberators have split themselves off from the pack and are now denying that expansion at the bottom. Okay. Has Showtime accidentally cornered himself? I wonder if it's a good idea for him to recall and out of here. Obviously, he can't recall everything, right? He just killed a ton of SCVs. But he needs to somehow, some way, get his army on out of there. Honestly, his army is still looking absolutely massive. Clem right now has to stand and fight. Showtime takes a dominating supply lead. Trading out a lot of his opponent's command centers as well, though Showtime also ended up losing a few of the next on the other side of the map. That being said, all of these stalkers incredibly low in HP right now. Marines and Marauders just trying to join in the fray, hitting wherever they can. Liberators providing a lot of support. Disruptor right there from the right does not do any damage. Ghost also just constantly auto-attacking. I mean, you mostly see Ghost being used as like a, 
a spellcaster, right? We see them being used for their EMPs and their snipes and their nukes and their cloaking and all that, but they still do a lot of supplemental damage. That is quite fantastic, and they really did help out in those engagements quite a bit. In the end, okay, showtime. Trying his very best to get rid of those liberators so he can continue mining over here. But he's once more gonna start shooting away at those workers. Disruptor? Careful. Alright, no stim available on the ghosts, of course. That's the only ability they lack. <laughs> that would be something if you could stim your ghosts. Alright, and what was a very significant lead for Showtime has now once again ping-ponged back into the favor of Clem. We've been ping-ponging for a while, man. Supply lead on both sides of the map all the time. Trading blows left, right, and center. Okay, so where's the mining at right now for Terran? Honestly, there's basically none. If you look right now at the income, yeah. He literally was not getting any income here for a while. Showtime's income graph shows him heavily in favor, right? Just because he is actually mining and he's getting 700 minerals more a minute and all that. That's nice. But the problem is, it's this right over here. It's these four mineral fields that are providing him that advantage. And that is really nothing too yeah, reliable. Those mineral fields are soon to be running out as well. Recall utilized on at least some of those Protoss units, trying to get some of them back home. Okay, Zealot's desperately running away. Stalker's also joining in, but Snipes once again. Alright, getting a lot of damage in. Command Center, heading on over. This is, I think, the old natural. Heading on over towards the base right below it. Disruptor's coming out of the main base. He needs to split against those. And he does. Good control here by Clem. Well, I guess he didn't split. He just ran away. Stalkers and Dark Templar roaming the map once more together. I like that Showtime is sprinkling in some DTs. Problem is, EMP is, on a, is yeah, a great way to reveal those as well. You don't even really need to use Scan anymore. That said, this is now the lifeline here of the Terran player. And I think that these Protoss units are going to find out about that base here in just a moment. Yeah, yeah. They are going to run on over in that direction. And they will spot that this is where the mining of the Terran player is coming from right now. Obviously, we have full vision, right? We know where the resources are coming in, and we know how much army these guys have. But these these players are constantly in the dark. They have to be incredibly cautious with the amount of... Uh, oh, I think you fight that. I think you fight that, dude. Yeah. I mean, recall is probably on cooldown right now, right? So maybe you don't actually fight that so you can actually get your units on out of there. Maybe uh, a trade would have been better, though, between those armies, because now Showtime is going to end up losing the majority of the Stalkers. EMP somehow as <laughs> well, on all of his own friendlies. In the meantime, though, Showtime is trying to long-distance mine one of the expansions that he, never uh, that he never finished. 66 versus 69 supply. That's kind of nice. But a lot of that supply of Showtime is caught up in workers. We're talking 45 probes versus only 9 SCVs. Keep in mind, though, there's not a lot of command centers either, right? There's only two orbitals, so it's not like his income here is particularly great. Plus, he may very well need to save a couple of scans if those Dark Templar once again go rampant. What Showtime really needs right now, since he's significantly behind in the army supply, what he really needs right now is... Well, a trait like that, right? Or a good Disruptor hit. I think a Disruptor hit would be golden if he can, like, take down a bunch of those Terran units. But obviously, Clem also knows that very well. Clem is going to be paying extra close attention to his army at this stage in the game. Supply count, incredibly close. Problem here for Terran, though, is that Protoss doesn't really even need to fight this army head on. Needs to be so careful, right? Because you never know exactly... Yeah, if there's going to be one of those disruptors coming out of the bush, the worst kind of Pokemon. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, right? When they get past those sight blockers, it's incredibly hard for the Terran to control that well. I think you need to have the Liberators leading the charge or maybe a Medivac boosted forward just to see exactly where that Protoss army is located. Right now, though, Glem is trying to corner this army and with Blink on cooldown for a moment at least, he's going to be able to get rid of some of those Stalkers and also both of the disruptors. And that's absolutely massive. Clem, in the meantime, thinking, okay, my opponent has spotted my bases on the left side of the map the entire time. What if I make the long flight on over towards the bottom corner of the map, or the bottom section of the map? Mining out those golden minerals would be pretty sweet. Keep in mind that mules mine a flat amount of resources, so mules do not get additional income anymore. 
Um, well, they haven't had that for like five years, but they do not get additional income from mining gold minerals over the blue mineral fields. Once upon a time, that was the case. So Terrans would just, you know, get to the, the golden base and then drop about a dozen mules. No longer uh, a strategic choice that you make, because it was a little bit silly. Anyhow, production! Not looking so hot here. What little money that Showtime is getting in with this long distance mining of his is being spent on an additional stalker or two. Speaking of which, I think that's basically his only unit right now. Okay, he does have a Dark Templar. And you know what? The Dark Templar found the base down north. Or down north? Sure, Loco. Look, I've been casting this game for about half an hour now as well. Okay, give me a break. This is where that solo duo or even quadruple casting comes in. You can actually think about your words a little bit more carefully. But at this point, Showtime realizes that he really does not have much of an army anymore. He doesn't have much economy anymore either. He's been on the run from Clem's army for the better part of 10 minutes. And just like that, it's the Frenchman who obtains the victory. Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video and you enjoyed watching, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below. It really does help. Thank you.